A very good evening aspirants. Before getting into the news article discussion, I have an announcement for you to know. See, clearing prelims is a mammoth task for many. But why worry when you have Shankara Ace Academy? See, our pre-storming program is aimed to facilitate this process. Pre-storming is the most reliable prelims test series offered by Shankara Ace Academy. Already two batches are going on successfully. Now for those who have missed to enroll in these batches, a third chance is awaiting. Yes, pre-storming batch 3 is starting on November 9th. The first test in this batch will commence on 20th November. Like the other batches, it will also have 66 tests. So go and register today to enhance your prelims score. So with this announcement, now let us move on to the Hindu newspaper analysis. Today's date is 6th of November 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much delay, let's get into the first news article discussion. Now look at this question corner article from the science and technology page. The question asked today is, why do puffer fish spawn on beaches under moonlight? See, to understand the answer for this question, we have to know two things. We have to know what is spawning and what are pheromones. See, spawning is a process of release or deposit of eggs by organisms like fish and frogs. And pheromones are hormones like chemicals. The difference between both is that while hormones are released inside the body, the pheromones are released outside the body. The next difference is that while hormones are chemical signals for our body's internal organs to communicate with itself, the pheromones are chemical signals used to communicate with other organisms of the same species. So now coming back to the question, why do puffer fish spawn on beaches under moonlight? See, the puffer fish normally spawn along the coast at night during springtide. After studying the genetic makeup of the puffer fish, the scientists concluded that this behavior is due to a release of a particular pheromone called PGE2. See, using this pheromone PGE2, the puffer fish communicate with each other and perform synchronized beach spawning. So, this is about the puffer fish and its spawning behavior. Now, while discussing about the behavior of the puffer fish, I mentioned that puffer fish normally spawn along the coast at night during spring tide. And here, what are the spring tides? See, first of all, tides are a periodic rise and fall in sea level due to the gravitational force exerted by the moon and the sun. In case of tides, it is the gravitational effect of the moon that plays an important role and the gravitational effect of the sun plays only a minor role. See, we know that our moon revolves around the earth and it takes four weeks for our moon to complete one revolution around the earth, right? So, whenever moon revolves around the earth, at two moments, the earth, sun and the moon fall in the same line. Once when the earth is between the sun and the moon and again when the moon is between the sun and the earth. So, when the earth is between the sun and moon, we get that full moon day. Again, when the moon is between sun and earth, we get the new moon day. So, in both the cases, the gravitational pull of the sun is added to gravitational pull of the moon on earth. This will cause the oceans to bulge a bit more than usual. This is called the spring tide. We know that every coastal area experiences two high tides and two low tides every day due to the rotation of the earth, right? But during spring tide, as the gravitational pull of the sun and moon adds up the high tides are a little higher and low tides are a little lower than average. But what happens when the sun and moon are at right angle to each other? See, when this happens, the bulge of the ocean caused by the sun partially cancels out the bulge of the ocean caused by the moon. This produces moderate tides known as neap tides. That is, during neap tides, high tides are a little lower and low tides are a little higher than average. An additional point to note here is that for every lunar month, our earth experiences two spring tides 
and two neap tights so that's all you have to know about this question corner article from the science and tech page so in this news article discussion we could able to understand why do puffer fish span on beaches under moonlight then we also understood the difference between the spring tide and neap tide so with these learn to points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now let us take up this news article this news article talks about enforcement directorate that is ed see yesterday the ed had questioned the personal assistant of delhi's deputy chief minister the investigation is conducted in connection with the money laundering probe in the implementation of delhi's exercise policy 2021 to 22 the ed also conducted searches at five locations in and around delhi in connection with the case so this is the crux of the news article given here so in this context let us learn few points about the enforcement directorate or ed and its functions see the enforcement directorate or directorate of enforcement is a law enforcement and specialized financial investigation agency it functions under the department of revenue of the ministry of finance the enforcement directorate is headquartered at new delhi and it is headed by the director of enforcement it also has five regional offices headed at mumbai chennai chandigarh kolkata and delhi and each regional office is headed by special directors of enforcement also know that ed also has offices at zonal levels and they are headed by a joint director so this is the institutional setup of ed now coming to their functions see ed is a multidisciplinary organization and it is mandated with investigation of offenses of money laundering and violations of foreign exchange laws now we'll see those laws and the statutory functions of ed under those laws firstly the prevention of money laundry act which is in short called as pmla see it is a criminal law enacted to prevent money laundering the law provides for confiscation and attachment of property which is involved in money laundering here the ed has been given the responsibility to enforce the provisions of the pmla the ed will conduct the investigation to trace the assets derived from money laundering and it confiscates those assets then ed also ensures the prosecution of the offenders under pmla secondly the foreign exchange management act 1999 which is in short called as FEMA c it is a civil law enacted to consolidate and amend the laws relating to external trade and payments this fema act also promote the orderly development and maintenance of foreign exchange market in india here the ed has been given the responsibility to conduct investigation see the investigation is conducted on suspected contraventions of foreign exchange laws and regulations see under fema act ed also has the powers to adjudicate and impose penalties on those who have contravened the law and finally the fugitive economic offenders act 2018 which is in short called as feoa see this act was enacted to deter fugitive economic offender now what does this term fugitive economic offender mean see if a person has left india to avoid criminal prosecution and if he or she refuses to return to india to face criminal prosecution then they are defined as fugitive economic offenders here the ed is mandated to attach the properties of the fugitive economic offenders who have escaped from india and by warranting arrest ED provide for the confiscation of fugitive economic offenders properties to the central government so these are all very important points that you have to make note of with respect to enforcement directorate so in this news article discussion we saw in detail about enforcement directorate and its functions with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article it is about the warning given by unesco See this news article says that one third of the glaciers on the UNESCO's World Heritage List are under threat, and it is found that the threat will continue despite the efforts to limit temperature increases. 
and this is about the news article given here in this context let us see the important points mentioned in the unesco report and also the significance of glaciers so now let's begin with the significance of glacier so why should we conserve them see the major reason is that glaciers cover about 10% of planet's surface and they are crucial for sustaining life on earth we'll see why they are crucial the first reason is that glacial ecosystems provide ecosystem services like sediment sinks freshwater reservoirs and we use this fresh water for domestic use agriculture industry and hydropower generation know that glaciers are called as water towers this is because glaciers in mountains provide low lands with essential fresh water supply so this is the first reason why glacial ecosystem is very important the second reason is that glaciers serve as habitat for biodiversity see about 50% of the global biodiversity hotspots on the planet are located in basins drained by glaciers and also know that they contain one third of the entire terrestrial species diversity the third reason is that glacier ice feed the great rivers of central asia south asia and southeast asia and fourthly they serve as a global thermostat by regulating ocean circulation and they reduce the global temperature see the white ice cover cools the earth by reflecting sunlight we call this as albedo effect so this means that glaciers play an important role in the global climate system itself now finally glaciers carry huge cultural and spiritual significance for many indigenous people and local communities see they provide economic and educational benefits through the recreation and tourism so now these are the reasons why we should conserve glaciers and icebergs now coming to the article it said that around 18600 glaciers have been identified in 50 world heritage sites and it is also found that world heritage glaciers lose on average some 58 billion tons of ice every year and they contribute to almost 5% of global observed sea level rise and projections indicate that glaciers in one third of world heritage glacierized sites will disappear by 2050 regardless of the applied climate scenario so the unesco report says that to stop glacier retreat we have to drastically reduce greenhouse gas emissions if emissions are cut to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees celsius then glaciers in Two third of world heritage sites could be saved. So that is all you have to know about from this news article discussion. In this news article discussion, we saw in detail about the significance of glaciers and why we have to conserve them. Along with that, we saw some of the facts that are mentioned in the UNESCO report. See, you can quote these facts in your main answer writing. That is why I am explaining you with all the data included. Okay. So these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion Now look at this news article this news article talks about the use of inhaled vaccines to stop and prevent the spread of SARS CoV-2 in China So in this context let us see about inhaled vaccines See the inhaled vaccines that is currently in the news is developed by a China based company called CanSino Few months back the nasal vaccine was in news and we have covered nasal vaccine on our 7th september 2022 hindi newspaper analysis interested people please go and check it out so now coming back see like the nasal vaccine the inhaled vaccine is also a needle free covid-19 vaccine that is there is no need to inject both nasal and inhaled vaccines but the procedure for administering the vaccine is different The nasal vaccine is sprayed inside the nose but in the case of inhaled vaccine first a mist of the vaccine is created in a cup after that this mist is sucked in through the mouth you can see this short clip to understand better so this is about the administration of the vaccine now what are all the advantages of the inhaled vaccine so the first advantage is easy administration for administering a needle some medical expert is required right 
but since the inhaled vaccine is needle free it can be easily administered by a semi skilled person so the inhaled vaccine can be easily incorporated in mass vaccination drives second is painless see some people especially kids they have an aversion towards getting injections due to the pain associated with the process but the inhaled vaccine is totally painless so the inhaled vaccine may persuade people who don't like getting an injection to get vaccinated this will increase vaccine coverage third advantage is effectiveness see covid virus mainly enters our body through our mouth and nose so if there is an effective immune response in our mucus layer of nose and mouth the covid virus can be neutralized before it reaches our body It is based on this principle that the inhaled vaccine claims its effectiveness. The inhaled vaccine helps mainly to give a boost to the immune cells that are present in the mucous membranes of the nose and mouth. Due to this the covid virus is neutralized at the point of entry itself. So they are more effective. Now the fourth advantage is they are better than the nasal vaccine. See nasal vaccine all sprayed in the nose so it induces immune response mainly in the nasal passage but the inhaled vaccine is sucked through the mouth so the vaccine droplets are delivered deep in the airway due to this the inhaled vaccine can induce a broader immune response than nasal vaccine so that is all you have to know about this inhaled vaccine i hope we have covered in detail about inhaled vaccine Currently in India it is not approved for usage but in main sense writing you can use these points as a way forward so these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this faq article it speaks about the status of remote voting for non resident indians so in this context let us learn about some of the points given in the news article before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference just go through it Firstly let us see why this is currently in talk. See recently the Supreme Court had disposed of a batch of petitions which are seeking remote voting for NRIs. Now this happened because the central government had told the court that it was looking for possible ways to facilitate remote voting for NRIs. know that by keeping the voting rights of NRI in mind earlier the central government had introduced a bill in 2017. This bill was proposed to facilitate proxy voting by overseas electors. However, this bill was lapsed and now the central government have told the Supreme Court that it is looking for various other options. That is why remote voting for NRIs is in news. See, we know that India has the largest diaspora population with nearly 1.35 crore NRIs spread across the globe, right? and many of them are in the gulf countries the usa and the uk but the issue here is in the 2014 parliamentary elections only 11846 nris registered and in that only a faction had voted in the election so here what is the reason for low nra registration and voting see earlier the representation of people act barred the voting right of nris who stayed beyond 6 months in abroad but what the government did was in 2010 it amended the rpa act and this enabled the eligible nris who had stayed abroad beyond 6 months also to vote in the election but unfortunately they have to visit the polling booth in person to vote and exercise their voting rights but the issue here is this step did not encourage the nris to participate in voting because most of them are laborers they lack financial resources to afford the travel tickets and there are also many other constraints so these are all the reasons why there is low nra registration and voting now let us see what the government did so far regarding remote voting for nris see between 2013 and 2014 many persons have filed a petition in the supreme court those petitions challenged the provision of the 2010 amendment which requires nris to visit the polling booth for voting in person then the supreme court directed the government to take action 
So, the Election Commission of India formed a committee in 2014 as per the Supreme Court's direction. See, this committee was formed to explore the voting options for overseas electors. The committee had recommended two remote voting options that is e-postal ballot and proxy voting. So, what are these proxy voting and e-postal ballot? Firstly, let us see about proxy voting. See, proxy voting is a voting process which allows a registered elector to delegate his voting rights to a particular representative where the representative here is called a proxy. Note that the proxy is selected by the registered elector. So, proxy voting helps the person to exercise his or her voting right through his or her proxy. Now, let us see about the e-postal ballot. See, e-postal ballot is the facility of casting votes by an elector using an electric voting system from a place other than the venue of his election booth. For this, we will take the example of electronically transmitted postal ballot system ETPBS. Here, the voting ballot will be transmitted through electronic means to the voters and it enables the voters to cast their vote electronically. So now, let us see the process involved in ETPBS. Firstly, the NRI voters, they needed to make an application to the returning officer of his or her constituency. Here, the application may be given in person or sent through online. Then, the returning officer will verify the details and will send the ballot electronically to the voters. Next, the voters can register their mandate on the ballot printout and send it back to the returning officer with an attested declaration. Here, the NRI voter will either send the ballot by ordinary post or drop it at an Indian embassy where the embassy will post it to the concerned authority. So, this is about the process of ETPBS. See, we have discussed elaborately about electronically transmitted postal ballot system in our Hindu newspaper analysis dated 5th November 2022, that is yesterday. You can go and watch it. Now, coming back, know that the recommendation of the committee regarding remote voting is not yet implemented by the government. Also here you have to note another thing, both ETPBS and proxy voting are currently available only to the service voters like those who are serving in the armed forces inside and outside India and those who are serving in diplomatic missions abroad. Then subsequently ECI consulted the political parties about the implementation of proxy voting but the majority of the political parties were against proxy voting because the party said there is no guarantee that the proxy would vote as per the actual voters choice. Then in 2017 the central government introduced a bill to amend the representation of people act to remove the condition of in-person voting for NRIs and enable them to vote through proxies. The bill was passed in the Lok Sabha in 2018, but it never introduced in the Rajya Sabha. So, the bill eventually lapsed with the dissolution of the 16th Lok Sabha. Then, in 2020, the ECI said to the law ministry that it was technically and administratively ready to facilitate ETPBS for NRIs in the 2021 assembly election in five states. But the external affairs ministry said it was not viable to roll out the ETPBS plan because there were huge logistical challenges relating to identity verification of voters, absence of polling agents, the polling on embassy staff, etc. So, this plan was also dropped. So, this is about the government's action so far in facilitating remote voting for NRAs. Now, what about the current situation? This is a question, right? See, as we discussed earlier, the government has made assurance in the Supreme Court that it is looking for possible ways to facilitate remote voting for NRIs and will bring some positive note. Also, the law ministry in last March said that the government was exploring the possibility of allowing online voting for NRIs. Then, in April, the Election Commission said that ETPBS for NRAs was being considered and the action would be taken to implement the remote voting option. So, we have to wait and see what is going to happen in the future. I hope this news article discussion gave you an idea about the constraints for NRAs in exercising their voting rights. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, have a look at this news article. 
See this news article depicts an image of edible art. Yes, here in this image you can see that a paddy field is turned into canvas and using the popular Japanese art form of rice paddy art or tambo art, a huge image of Jesus Christ is created. See, this is not something happening yesterday. Even few days back, a Vyanad farmer created Ashoka Chakra using tambo art. So what is this tambo art? how it is created and why it is gaining attention in India. That is what we are going to investigate in this news article discussion. See in Japanese, rice field are called ta or tambo. And as I already said, tambo art uses rice fields as a canvas to create huge design works by planting rice with different colored leaves and grain heads. The idea is that the design illustration will be viewed from a high point like a viewing platform. Okay? Now the image that you are looking at is created by Mr. Prasid Kumar Tail. He is a progressive farmer in Vayana district in Northern Kerala. He has used six varieties of rice seeds like Ramli, Dabar Shala, Nazarbath, Raktasali, Krishna Kaumod and Kalyani Violet to create a 3D image following this tambo art. So, how these gained pieces of tambo art are created? See, firstly, a design is chosen by the farmer to cultivate the rice seedlings. Remember, the artwork cannot be completed unless the rice plants are cultivated well. Nurturing the seedlings is an extremely important task. Along with the seedlings in the nursery, preparations also begin on the rice fields. Water is run into the fields, the earth is tilted and fertilizer is spread. Next, a base drawing of the design is made and a surveyor makes a design blueprint for the stakeout based on this. The area is then surveyed according to the coordinates written on the design blueprint and the field is staked out with the stakes joining together by ropes. Then, the farmer decides the variety of seedlings to be planted in each section. Next, the rice fields are finally planted. So, this is how the huge edible art is created. Now, since rice is the stable food of Japanese people, after the rice plants are harvested, the rice is milled into polished rice and later on, it will be given out to those who participated in the event and it is used as a treat for lunch at that event event okay so this is how the popular japanese art form of rice paddy art is created now coming back see this huge image was drawn by artist ed raji with the assistance of only eight women workers the young farmer spent 15000 rupees to complete the paddy artwork and since tambo art are created with great attention paid to details, it is creating large tourist centers. And the young farmer is expecting at least 10,000 visitors to his farm this year. On the other hand, the farmer's gene bank has also collected as many as 300 varieties of rice seeds from across the country, of which 100 varieties have been cultivated this season on his 10 acres using organic methods. Now seeing this, many other farmers in the district are also following his path in creating small images in their paddy fields as well. So this is all you have to know about this news article. It is a kind of creative cultivation, right? So knowing something new is also important. So in this news article discussion, we saw in detail about the popular Japanese art form of rice paddy art or the tambo art. So these learned points. Now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion. Now look at this first question. This question is a previous year question which is asked in 2017. Let me read out the question for you. So you understand the question well so that you can answer the question correctly. The question says, at one of the place in India, if you stand on the seashore and watch the sea, you will find that the sea water resides from the shoreline a few kilometers and come back to the shore twice a day and you can actually walk on the sea floor when the water resides. This unique phenomenon is seen at option A, Bhavnagar, option B, B Munipatnam, option C, Chandipur and option D, Nahapatnam. 
C, the correct answer for the question is option C, Chandipur. See, Chandipur is located in Odisha. It is also called as the hide and seek beach because during low tide, sea water in the Chandipur beach retreat inside the sea from 1 km to 5 km and it again comes back to the shore slowly during high tide. This happens twice every day. And the famous Abdul Kalam Island where the integrated test range is located 70 km south of Chandipur beach. So the correct answer for this question is option C. Now moving on, this question is regarding mRNA vaccine. Look at this first statement. In case of mRNA vaccine, our body is tricked into producing viral protein. This viral protein initiates immune response. Whether the statement is correct? See this statement is actually correct. Unlike classical vaccine that use weakened or dead microbes to initiate immune response, the mRNA vaccine tricks our body into producing viral protein that generate immune response. So this statement is actually correct. Now look at the second statement. mRNA vaccine are completely synthetic and inexpensive to produce. See this statement is also correct. They are inexpensive to produce compared to classical vaccine. Hence, they can be employed in mass vaccination drives. Now look at this third statement. mRNA is considered safe than normal vaccines as they do not contain weaker or dead disease causing organism. Statement 3 is also correct. mRNA is safer than classical vaccine. Now look at this statement 4. mRNA vaccines effectiveness is lower when compared to classical vaccine. See this statement is actually incorrect. They are more effective than classical vaccines. This is because mRNA vaccine help produce viral protein that generate immune response. So here the correct answer for the question is option A, 1, 2 and 3 only because fourth statement is incorrect. Now moving on, this question is about enforcement directorate. Statement 1, it says that it is a specialized financial investigation agency functions under the Ministry of Home Affairs. This statement is actually wrong. It comes under Department of Revenue of Ministry of Finance. So this statement is incorrect. Now look at the second statement. It is responsible for enforcing the provisions of Prevention of Money Laundering Act 2002. See this we saw in our discussion itself. This statement is actually correct. It is a multidisciplinary organization mandated with the task of enforcing the provisions of PMLA and FEMA. Now the third statement states that it is headquartered at Mumbai. See this statement is wrong. We saw that in the discussion itself. It is headquartered at New Delhi. It has a regional office in Mumbai but not the head office. So here the question asked for incorrect statement. The correct answer for the question is option C 1 and 3 only because statement 2 is correct. Now moving on, this question about glacier is a quiz question for you today. Just try to solve the question and post the correct answer in the comment section. So the question displayed here is the mains practice question for you today. Just go through the question, write an answer and post it in the comment section. With this, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you liked the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.